Oh, so welcome everyone for today's um, learn learn from home PSD learn from home session. I can see that there are a lot of people dialing in now. So for now, we now have twenty four participants. Can you say hi, everyone? We have C H from General Electric. Hello, hi C H. Hi. Hello, oh, yeah, C H. Right. So we can see people saying hi in the chat box now. Hi, Marielle Jamante. Marielle Jamante, where are you calling from? We also have Cherry Benavista, Elaine, Geraldine Olmilio, Jason Villanueva, Jeffrey Faustino. Yeah, we have so many people calling in now. Hi to all. Hi, Jazz. Hi, Paul. You're calling from Taguig City. Hello, welcome. Marielle is calling from Batangas. Batangas is Southern Luzon here, um, CH. Um, so Elaine says, hi, CH, glad to have you today. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Elaine. That's, this is really amazing. So we're now, we're now around almost 30 people in, in Zoom, and we expect more people to flow in as we get nearer 2 o'clock. Sure. Um, we are also live in Facebook. So we will have a lot of um, followers there as well, especially the ones that were not able to register in Zoom. Uh -huh. Because I think as of this morning, I saw that we had around 300 who registered in Zoom. And right. if our statistics will show us correctly, half of that will be here today. Because uh -huh. usually we have around 50, 52% attendees. Sure, sure. Yeah. So let's hope we'll give yes, let's hope we have more. <laughs> um, hi. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Roslyn from Antipola City and Jonah. Hello. Um, how's, how's our audio? Can you hear me and CH well? And can you also see our video clearly? Are we not choppy? Oh, Luz is here and Luz says yes. Hello, you, hello Luz. Welcome again. Thank you for bringing CH to our lives. <laughs> it's my... Ah! Roslyn, it's my first time to listen here. Oh, that's amazing. I hope you have a great experience today, Roslyn. Um, thank you, Pauline. How do I Pauline? spell Roslyn? How do I Roslyn. spell Roslyn? R-O-S-S-L-Y-N. All right. Yeah. Pauline, thank you. She said audio and video is very good, very clear. Right. So maybe it's because it's raining. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Okay, so maybe I can start and share my slides so that we can start briefing people. Um, I'll share my screen so we can check if my screen is also doing okay. How's that for everyone? Can you see my screen well? Yes? Okay, starting to look for the chat box now. Chat box. Okay, chat box is here. Thanks, Luz. Looking good. Oh, and I haven't even fixed my hair, so I look like Madonna in the 80s. But that's <laughs> fine because, <laughs> like, having haircut is quite a luxury nowadays. So, <laughs> hello, Geraldine Olmilio from Bicol. Hi. Yeah, you're both coming across very clearly. Um, Marie Carion. So, we now have. 40 people dialed in. That's very good. Um, okay, so we have 10 minutes before the actual start of the session. So for the people who are here, just say hi to the other ones who are already in the room. My suggestion for everyone, because you might not be seeing everyone else's chat and you see that there's a lot of people chatting already. My reminder for everyone is you put your chat um, configuration to send to all panelists and send to all attendees. So right now, most of you are just sending to all panelists. So only CH and I can see your greetings. So our suggestion is for you to put your configuration in chat to all panelists and all attendees. This way, you can also say hi to one another, not just to CH and I. All right? Yeah, so Jeanette, thank you for sending it to all. From Department of Agrarian Reforms, hi. Krija, uh, from... Krija, are you the same Krija who also was the teacher who was there last time during the chillax session? Yeah. Hi, Ma'am Cherry. Hi, Miss Benavista. Yay. Hello. I can see so many teachers in the, in the room. All right. So maybe we can start um, by just a few introductions of um, Opland Hope, especially that we have some new people in the room. No? 
So my name is John Baluyot, and I'm currently the president of the Philippine Society for Talent Development. And uh, we have CH right now, who's from General Electric. He's currently the regional learning manager for one of the um, regions in General Electric. Uh, and he will be talking about how to find strength through authenticity. Uh, so for today, let me first go back to the broader picture, why exactly we are doing all of this. So the PSED Learn From Home, which is what you're attending right now, is a byproduct of the Philippine Society's talent development's um, response to the crisis. So what we did was we created a task force called Oplan Hope, or we call it Hang On People Enablers, mainly because that's really our community. The community that PSDD is under is a community of people enablers, community of talent developers, community of educators, mentors, teachers, coaches, etc. So Oplan Hope's main objectives are as follows. Number one, is we want to be able to support the Philippine community as everyone copes during this time of crisis. And at the same time, of course, being a nonprofit organization that we are, we also want to make sure that we sustain PSTD. Because like, we need to make sure that the funding is okay. And that's exactly why you are now seeing some paid programs also in our roster. So, but don't worry. Just because we are charging people now for some paid programs does not mean that we're going to stop with the free ones. In fact, if you look at our statistics, out of the 21 programs or classes or learning sessions that we were able to run, we have just charged for three of them. So that's a pretty nifty number, you know, especially for learning sessions that we were delivering from various um, thought leader organizations all around the world. So PSCB Learn From Home series is that. We, we've already done 21 classes. We have reached 7,296 live Zoom attendees from all over the country. And a lot of these we are also publishing in our Facebook page. So if you missed some of the learning sessions, all you have to do is go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash mypstd. And you will be able to see uh, you will be able to see the videos that we were able to finish there as far as um, our sessions are concerned. Okay, I have one question. Do you see like, like, am, do you see my slides or is the videos interrupting the slides? Like, are, is what you're seeing just the slides? Chat, where are the chat boxes? Okay, hold on. Slides only. Okay, amazing. Thank you. Right. So that's PSDD Learn From Home. This is the scope by which we have um, gathered our speakers for the meantime. So we have already pinned North America. We have already pinned Europe. We have already pinned South Asia. We have Southeast Asia. And we, of course, have Australia from different speakers all over. Now, season two of PSDD Learn From Home just started this week okay so season one was all about how to digitize learning how to support teams during the COVID-19 pandemic the roles that leaders L&D leaders play during times of crisis so this is season two season two for the next four weeks is about resilience 2.0 so this is where PH learning community bounces back that's our theme and for this week um, on May 15 so that's today we have CH who will talk about building strengths through authenticity. And two sessions before this, we already had two paid sessions. So we had Gallup who talked about the importance of strengths. And we had Lisa Makuha also just yesterday who started talking about uh, the importance of discipline and structure in strengths. Um, next week, we will start talking about rebuilding by finding our core in North. And you will have two speakers who will, have, who will talk about that. So on May 20, we have Louis Banta, so one of our premier and very innovative um, le learning and development uh, training providers in the Philippines under LJMB. He will be talking about how to conquer your fears during the pandemic. And on May 22, um, we will be talking about preparing your people for the new normal. And the one who will talk about uh, this topic is Lisa, who is also the vice president of HR for Universal Rubina Corpora Corporation. And the week after that is one of the most exciting ones because this one is about translating your brand into livelihood. So we will have, for example, we will have someone 
Um, I'm not sure if you know Abigail Arenas. So Abigail Arenas used to be a uh, uh, Miss Philip Miss Universe Binibining Pilipinas, who also became a board of trustee of PSDD, and she will be talking about balik alindog sa trabaho or bounce back to work, a micro learning session on personal branding. That's on May 27. That's also free. Um, and we also got an international speaker, Simon Hammond, thanks to Jose de Colomon. He's an influencer on branding and he's also a professor in Swinburne University in Australia. And he will be talking about personal branding beyond the pandemic. Using your truth to win in a world of lies. Oh, di ba? Ang lalim. <laughs> so, and then of course, on May 25, we will start talking about how to start up during the pandemic. And we have, some, we have Prem Paipon, who is the head of the incubator program of the Asian Institute of Management. He ha um, we, so we will be having all of these programs in the next few weeks. I hope this excites you because this really excites me because there's so much that we have to do for us to bounce back. Um, okay, let me go next. And of course, after the learning sessions, we, now have, we also have TikTok. So TikTok is a way by which you can be checked out by uh, coaches, mentors, counselors, and I've tried this, you know, I tried this yesterday because people have the misconception that you need to have problems first before you need to talk to someone. No, actually, you can just talk to anyone, especially if you're having a difficult time with just the most simple things because um, you don't have to wait for you to be on the edge before you can actually talk to someone and see what you can converse with to give you clarity, to give you insights and thoughts. So I tried it yesterday. It was really fun. Alex Pedron was my um, TikTok buddy. And he gave me, he listened to me like 70% of the time. And he gave me like great advice on how I can move forward to be a better leader, not just for PSTD, but as a person. So I hope you can also try this out. It's free anyway. We're not going to charge you anything. And so far, our TikTok buddies have been rating 9 out of 10 in the post-evaluation. So please feel free to just register. We also have Chillax with PSTD and we have like your gorgeous men now in, um, because in the previous episodes we have like um, our uh, main uh, gorgeous titas who are part of your uh, Chillax with PSTD. This weekend we will have Lawrence Ko who will be your more main moderator. He's the domain manager for talent of IO Manila. And then we have Michael Makapagal who is the director for people and culture of JP International Philippines. And then we have, of course, our very own Jun Roy, who's the HR consulting head of now of Nomura Research Institute. So they will be your chillax buddies with PSTD on May 16 at 3 p.m. Yeah. Ah, yeah. And this is my last plug. No? So I hope you join this contest or this movement. It's, it's called Write, Inspire, and Win. You write a story about how PSTD programs recently has helped you during the enhanced community quarantine. And this is not just for PSDD. Huh? This is not to feed our egos or to tell us how great a job that we're doing. This is not for us. This is for our community because all of your stories are ray of hope and inspiration for a lot of people. Like for example, there was someone who sent me an entry and he told, she told me that when she did a TikTok session, that was one of the best Saturdays that she has had in the lockdown. You see how big a moment that is for someone to tell you that that was the best Saturday that I've had during this lockdown. That's a big impact on the lives of people. So we want to hear your stories and we don't care if it's short or it's long because we look at all stories equally. You will not win because you had the longest one or the most popular one. The, the, the winning here is if you submit to us, we will raffle out all our entries. And even if you just talk to us in three sentences how you were inspired, that will be okay. You will already be an entry. Just follow the instructions in the sheet. All right? So I hope to receive more of your entries soon because um, I've only had like four entries so far, and that includes mine. <laughs> I want to ask everyone now if I'm still getting across clearly. Can I check if I'm still... Ah, my voice is cracking up a bit. Okay. Let me close some windows. 
on. Uh, I'll stop screen share and close some windows. And we will still have time. Uh, Okay, just hang on. Sorry for the technical difficulty. Um, this really happens sometimes. Okay. All right. How's that? Is that clear? Is that clear? Or am I still getting across like vaguely? Actually, my Zoom is hanging now. Hello, I'm back. How's that? Is that better? Well, it's still chopping a bit, and I think it's because of my system. I think I have to restart. Uh, um, hello? Hi, can you hear me, CH? Yeah, I thought I had to restart. Yeah, it's my it's it's my zoom i think i have to restart my laptop okay no okay we'll wait um, can, yeah so ch can you please like chat with the audience for a bit and i'm gonna come back in two minutes okay anyway we no still worries. have five minutes to spare no right. worries no worries Hello. hi everybody can you hear me i'm ch srinivas uh, call ch fantastic Hey, thanks, uh, Christian, thanks. The names are moving so fast. So lovely to see so many of you say hello to me. It's such a good morning to have so many of you say hello. Um, and then I can see lots of names. Hi, Luz, thank you so much. Uh, and of course, yeah, I think uh, this is a time which we can utilize. Uh, and then of course, uh, hi, ma'am, uh, hi, Glory. To all of you, I'm I'm very excited to be with you. I'm CH Srinivas. I prefer being called CH. I am based out of a city called Pune in India, which is the western part of India. Um, and uh, I'm very passionate about uh, learning and development. And that doesn't mean I'm a great guy. It just simply means that I'm passionate. This is like, you know, sometimes I tell people that I'm very passionate about music, but don't expect me to pick up mic and sing. I just like music. That's about it. Similarly, learning and development is my passion. Coaching is my passion. And I'm very, very excited to be with all of you uh, and hope that this session will make a lot of sense. And uh, in all, uh, predominantly, I've been in learning and development space. Um, and uh, about 28 odd year, 27 odd years now uh, working um, in various spaces. I worked in editing, publishing, bit of uh, space selling, marketing, academic administration. And uh, I've been with my current company for about 19 years. 
I just finished 19 years in March and uh, absolutely excited. Anything else you want to hear? So, so uh, John, I thought as you joined, I'll just do the introduction. All right. Hello. Hey, John, you're back. Hi, I'm back. See, I think Lovely. it's the. I think it's the universe telling me to shut up because I really talk. On <laughs> but anyway, Not I'll at go, all. Not <laughs> at all. I'll go back to my slides now, um, and then just share my screen. I think it's faster now, right? Like you can hear me more yes. clearly. So it's my computer. It's my system. It had to. It needed some restart. Okay. So what can you do for PSTD to support our cause? So number one is. You can like our page and share our content. And you can ask your friends to like our page because we, our community has grown significantly in the past four weeks. You know that we now have 4,000 additional followers in Facebook. And the reason why that's important is because we're doing this to help communities, learning communities in general. And if you can see in the chat group, and I will say hi, and I know a lot of people will say hi too. We have a lot of teachers because we have reached a community of teachers also. So to the teachers and educators who are now here in this call, hi and please say hi and raise your hands because this is also for you, right? Um, we're not just after trainers here, we're not just after coaches, we're also after educators because all of us are part of the Philippine community of learning. So you're all welcome and thank you so much for being here, right? So please share, continue to share to your network. We want to grow further so we can reach more people. And you can also be a member of PSTD so you can help us with our funds. So basically how to be a member of PSTD is simple. Um, you can just go to www.psdd.org or scan this QR code to apply as a member. These are the things that you will get. Ordinarily, our members only have 12 months. But because of the crisis, we're extending membership to 15 months, especially for those who will register until June 15. And our individual members have free two of any of the following, Itipanan, paid webinars, master classes that we will be offering very soon. And corporate members will have free five of these following things, Itipanan, paid webinars, and also master class sessions. You will also form part of our community of practice and will have access to LND resources that are not usually available to non-members. So just to let you know, ever since we started this, I think uh, ever since we started recruiting for members, we now have 31 new members who have signed up with us. So please, please, if you have the resources and if you have the funds and if you want to help us provide more free learning sessions to other individuals and organizations and communities, please be a member and we will be glad to have you. All right, okay, so without further ado, let me now go to the reminders and CH's um, introduction. So you know the reminders that we have are very basic. Number one, we, all attendees will be in mute simply because of the sheer number of our attendees here. We now have 130, almost 130 attendees in Zoom and we are broadcasting live via Facebook. So instead of like letting you in on audio, we will accommodate your responses and insights through the chat boxes. Second is, for your questions, please put them on the Q&A tab because for, for a big audience like this, it's really confusing to have questions in the chat tab. So your chat boxes will only be for your insights, your responses, and your participation, but your questions will be for the Q&A tab. So I hope that's clear for everyone. Um, fourth reminder is, again, only Zoom login participants who have stayed in for at least 40 minutes will be given certificates. Uh, all right. Um, the other questions that we're getting usually is, are we going to share the slides? CH has said yes. We are going to share his slides to you as soon as we finish the session. All right. Now, let me go to um, the introduction of CH. Okay. CH, I hope I got, I hope you got your title and your name correct this time. <laughs> so, so CH is currently the Regional Learning Manager of General Electric. He's very passionate about coaching, he's very passionate about mentorship, change management, interpersonal communication, emotional intelligence. He also loves music 
and he loves anything that has to do with personal development of individuals. CH has 16 years of experience in GE Capital Consumer Finance Incorporated and includes roles in learning HR and HR. Um, and CH is very modest. He said that there is a lot of great things about him. So when I read his profile, apparently he has a PhD in linguistics and phonetics. So he's also an educator. So just like most people in the room who I've seen in the chat group who are also teachers and educators, you will be able to resonate well with this age. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to transfer the screen now to the UCH. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so you can share yours. Can you all hear me loud and clear or is there any challenge? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Thanks, John. Uh, thanks, Luz, one of my friends who's introduced me to be part of this conversation. Uh, appreciate you giving me this opportunity. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay, so as we started, so let me first of all um, give a little quick one. Somebody asked, what is my time? It's about 11.45 in the morning. And somebody asked, what is my interest? My interest is music. I once told somebody, if my HR or somebody would come and tell your family is taken care of, I would right away resign and go and learn music because music is a passion for me. Uh, I would love to one day be able to sing. All right. Um, so as we start the session on the screen, you will find a question. My request is uh, in the chat box um, and, and particularly in the uh, chat box, write down your responses to this question. I will be a more authentic self if I start something or I stop something. So let me see what responses we are getting. Can you see some of the responses? Oh yeah, CH. So Leslie has replied and she said, um, I will be more authentic self. My, I'll be, I will be a more authentic self if I start believing in myself. Fantastic. And Marilyn also said, start upgrading myself. Great. Clint said, start being vulnerable. Stop hiding my emotions. Hmm. And then Krija says, start adapting to changes. Brilliant. Yeah, so we have a lot of awesome. responses. Here. Awesome. So I think uh, that the whole idea of this question is to get you thinking about it because you guys, uh, all of you are investing about an hour of your time. That means by the end of it, you should have got some return. So I want you to be clued on to this thinking. This is not a lecture. I'll keep asking you questions. Um, as I saw, it almost looks like John, these people have read my slides uh, because they are talking about self-belief. They are talking about self-awareness. Uh, they are talking about vulnerability. They are talking about uh, emotional uh, expression, and then they're talking about adapting to change, which are all what I'm going to touch upon today. CH, would you like to see their demographic now that there's around 140 of them? Fantastic. Why wouldn't yeah. you show that? I can do, I can do a poll for everyone. So I'm launching the poll now. And right. the, poll, the poll asks, what category of talent development mm -hmm. practitioner do you fall under? Sure. Are you an educator, technical trainer, soft skills trainer? coach, mentor, manager, or others. So just choose the answer that's nearest to you because sometimes you can be two or three of these, you know? So um, CH, will, can, will you be able to see the results in your screen as they're moving or um, it's not, not part of your- right now. Yeah, right now All right. I'm able to see. Okay. Let me know so if I'll, there is some place I need to, excuse oh, no, me, no, look that, at. That, that's, that's okay. I think you have, a, you have to be a host and I'm currently the yeah. host now. So majority of the ones answering are they are saying 22% has said that they're soft skills trainer okay. and 23% says that they are educators. So we have a lot of teachers in the room okay. and 19% says that they are coaches. 15% says that they're technical trainers. 
Um, 17% says that they're managers. And there's 86 responses already. So that's amazing. Awesome. Uh, majority, majority so far are educators and soft skills trainers. Yeah, let fantastic. Me, let me, yeah, let me stop the polling so that you will see the final number based on 90 responses, CH. I'll sure. share this with you. Sure. Oh, yeah, I can see that. Okay. Awesome. All yeah. Time, right? So, so we have a lot of educators in the room. Yeah, but if I were to summarize all of this, John, the way I look at it is these are the people who make difference to others. Right. That's true. Right. Uh, these are not the people who are living for themselves, but these are people whose success depends on others' success. Uh, right. And I think authenticity really gets there. And so let me just um, move my slide and then see if you are able to. Uh, am I the host now? Or can I move my slides? So CH, you just go back to your, because sometimes I think you have to go back to your browser or, or your PowerPoint presentation to see, uh, to be able to navigate it. Okay. Now. Okay. So we can you see your slides now. Yeah. Okay. Whenever, um, and, and I'm an Indian, I speak faster sometimes. Uh, when I'm excited, I go faster, further faster. Mm -hmm. So do stop me just in case I go faster. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll be conscious. So. This is one thing I thought will be of some curiosity to people. I just taken some research articles, some inputs. This slide is broadly about telling the kind of impact uh, because the leader is not authentic or the organization is not authentic. There is a loss of shareholder value. There, are lo there is loss of jobs. There is lots of revenue loss. And that is the significance of this topic as to why should one be authentic? And uh, what happens if one is not being authentic? So as we go along, we'll get deeper into it. But just to get you thinking, 115,000, 120,000 jobs getting lost, significant big organizations becoming irrelevant and destroyed is just because the leader of the organization has not been authentic. The leadership team of the organization has chosen not to be authentic. So from that standpoint, I just want to bring you to think about these slides are not so much about teach. And thanks, um, John and Luz, for bringing me in for this. This is my reflection of what authenticity is all about. Uh, what are sometimes I find authenticity to be difficult? Uh, where did I fail being authentic? Uh, and also, I'm going to talk about some good stories of uh, my leaders who've been authentic and because of which I benefited from their behaviors. So as, as John said, this material will be available for you. Um, and also the research that I've done to get to these slides uh, is also made available in terms of you know, the reference material that you could pick up and use. All right as we talk about it. So let me transition to talk about what is authenticity and what is not authenticity. So let me give you a quick story. I once went to a manager of mine and I said, can you give me a feedback on what should I do to get promoted? <clears throat> the answer was surprising. He looked at me and said, to be very honest, CH, to get promoted, you are ready. But to not promote you, and give you why I can't promote you, I can give you 20 reasons, but you are ready. So let me not create wrong impressions. But right now, the organization is not in a stage to promote two people into a similar kind of role. The organization doesn't have the bandwidth. But I understand you have a need, and unless you get promoted, certain benefits will not come your way. So let me check with HR and see how we can make this possible for you. Now, that's what is being authentic. He didn't tell me stories and he didn't cook up new inventions to tell me why I was not good. He said, you are good, but just you are good is not a reason to promote you because the organization is not ready. And if I promote you into a larger role, with, into a larger title with a small role, actually you will suffer later. So it is better to be in a smaller role with bigger responsibility, right? 
So that was a leader who was authentic. And let me give you a quick example of a leader who was uh, unauthentic. Uh, I went and asked this one manager of mine, uh, I need to, I want to apply for a role and move on into a different uh, business. This manager said, oh, absolutely. We encourage it. You know, right in our company, we are always supportive. You know, I'm always there for you. But let me just think and come back. And two days later, comes back and tells, see, how long have you been in this role? I said, about two and a half years. And the person looks at me and says, ah, we think you should be in this role for another one and a half years. I said, sure. I didn't ask a question. But 15 days later, I got to know that my manager was actually applying for the role that I wanted to apply. Now, that is strongly about what is not authenticity. The person was not true to himself or herself. The manager could have simply said, hey, CH, I've been doing this role for longer and I'm looking at applying for the role. Once I move out of this role, you will become the leader. Um, so would you be okay with it? At least indulge in a conversation, engage in a conversation and let me know. So that's what this slide is about. I'm just leaving it for 15 seconds for you to look at what is authenticity, what is not authenticity. And John, as we are going on this uh, de definition or whatever, if you are getting any questions, I'm, f I'm free to take it in the next uh, minute or two. Just in case. Right. Thank you, CH. Um, so I guess that's your discussion of the why, right? The why of authenticity. Yeah, there are two things. Uh, I'll come back to the why again, but what is authenticity, what it is not. Right. And that's what I'm talking about. Right, cool. And Thank what you. kind of impact it created, I will talk about in the subsequent slides. Right. Thank you. Uh, well, so far, we don't have any questions yet. Fantastic. From the so let me move so on. Can proceed. So what will happen else? You know, if you are not authentic, what can be the impact? So in my case, uh, with the first leader, I chose to stay with him in the same title and designation for the subsequent two and a half years. And I didn't get promoted because the organization didn't grow at the pace which we expected. That's not his mistake. And it's my choice to decide whether I will stay or not. As a couple of them told earlier, I think one, I need to learn to believe myself. My manager's belief in me is not my belief about myself. So what will be the loss if you are not authentic? You lose trust. I, I start becoming an incredible, you know, not, not so credible individual. It can have a business impact. It can cause actually relationships. Till you don't tell the truth, the people, till people don't get to know the truth about you, they will trust you. Once they get to know you, probably they will never believe you. And in all of these things, if we demonstrate, this is all what would happen if you are not authentic. Obviously, if you are authentic, you build trust, you build relationships, you start feeling positive internally. You start being that much more uh, secure internally. In the two examples that I gave, my first manager who talked about my promotion was very secure internally. He never saw me as a competition. The second person I talked about was looking at me as a competition. Hence was trying to avoid me in that, remove me from that conversation, give me false promises, uh, push me into something else. So authenticity is about being true to yourself. And to be doing that, internally you should feel absolutely secure. I remember recently one day my son wrote to me saying, my son is doing his medicine. He wrote to me saying, you know, um, I have a project. I think it's a big project. I want to involve a lot of people in it. But my only worry is what if they all take away the credit from me? Now, that kind of fear in the head can stop collaboration. That kind of fear will actually encourage people to stop their genuine thinkings and then give plastic artificial conversations. And then when the reality comes, people are shocked and surprised saying, oh my God, he told you will always be supportive. I don't know how he did this. So start asking yourself, how honest am I to myself? Now here is where my closing point on this one. 
I honestly don't bother whether uh, what others think about me or not. But the day when I start hating myself, I think then I can never be authentic. So this is a little quick quote for you from Brené Brown, uh, my favorite one. If you trade your authenticity for safety, you may experience anxiety, you experience depression, you experience eating disorders, rage, blame, and last one is inexplicable grief. So, so I'm trying to highlight from this slide the short term versus long term benefits. Sometimes to gain some benefit, how many of you think about it in your meetings or in your interactions? People say, hey, will you do this, EH? You'll say, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. You go out to the water cooler while having water. You say, I don't know why John gives everything to me only. He look at Lou, she's not doing anything, right? Why doesn't he call? But who should I have said that to? Am I being authentic? No. In the meeting room, I said yes. Outside the meeting room, I'm telling people that uh, John is not doing what he should do. But that is a wasteful conversation because I'm telling somebody who can do nothing about it. And I'm not even telling my true opinions. But John is thinking CH will do it. And the worst part is I will not do it. So start looking at what are some short-term benefits to gain some short-term favors. If you trade your authenticity, it can cause a lot of pain. And I one of my, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, can I ask a question on this? Sure. Because like, I don't see any yet in the Q&A tab. Um, you know, I think there's a big value to authenticity really, because um, it helps you get more influence in the way, especially with, with the benefits that you mentioned here. Uh, because when people, because in a world wherein there's so many lies, like you have so many lies happening in social media, fake news, a lot of people are looking for the authenticity nowadays, right? Um, however, I think one of the barriers to authenticity is that people are afraid of repercussions. That sometimes if they show their true selves, or if they show what they are comfortable with in front of people, they will be judged. Sure. And if they are judged, then they will start losing power. They are start gonna they are gonna start losing control. So mm -hmm. how can you respond to that? All right. So I'll give you a thirty thousand feet answer right now, John. And then when we get to my next sections, we'll get deeper into it, because I'll tell you stories of a couple of leaders who have done a good job of that. But a thirty thousand feet answer to that one is. Uh, the fear of rejection, losing something, this is all because I'm not feeling comfortable with myself and I'm competing with others. And the unfortunate reality is how much ever I do, uh, I will never be able to satisfy everybody. There will be some point in time I have to decide myself at the end of the day, am I going to feel happy? So let me give a quick uh, piece. Once my son came and told me, I want to beat this girl in competition. I said, how will you do that? Get more than her. And this continued. I said, imagine the example, when you try to beat the girl, first of all, how much do you get now? 70%. How much does the girl get? 95%. How will you beat her? Get more than her. So I asked him, what if you get 68 next time? He's, he was 80 year old. He stopped and said, but that is less than my marks. I said, true. Uh, do you dislike yourself? He said, no. Then I said, imagine now you could not beat the girl. Do you like her? He said, no. He was a child. He was very honest. So that was my aha moment. I realized if you are competing with others, if you are waiting for others' judgment of you, there is always unhappiness and anxiety. So from then on, I started coaching my son to look at his marks and say, you got 40, that's okay. So how much do you want to get next time? And in the next exam, we'll get some percentage. Then I'll ask, how did you get that? So eventually I showed him a number where he was feeling happy with himself and he was stopped bothering about the girl. And his assumption in the first one is when he tries to improve, the girl will stay at 95, but the world keeps changing. So my answer is the radar needs to be internal. The microscope is in, inward looking. It, like two days ago, I was writing, if you want to look at the stars, you use the telescope. But to reach for the stars, you have to use a microscope. So start looking at yourself closely. 
Did I answer that, John? Yes, definitely. And oh my God, that was just so on point. <laughs> Thank you, CH. I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the more meat of your discussion after. F fantastic. So here I will introduce quickly three H's of an authentic leader. And the three H's are the head, the heart, and the hand. In the head, what I think, the beliefs, values, thoughts I have. In the heart, the kind of emotions and feelings I go through and the hand, my actions and decisions and behaviors. If these three are not in sync, then the leader is not authentic. So first, those people who are a little visually motivated, uh, the, the overlap of the head, heart, and hand is authenticity. So continuing with my son's example, uh, if I were to tell him, don't bother about it, don't bother about your percentage, just work hard and get better than yourself. But next time when he comes back and tells me that I got 85%, uh, I say, okay, what, who got the first? Then he says, yeah, a friend got first and uh, there are three of them who got first. I say, how could you not work hard? What am I being now? I've stopped being authentic. My action tells that I'm comparing him. But in my show of behavior, I told him, don't bother about anybody. I'm always there for you, focus on yourself. Now, this is what I mean by what I think in my head, what I feel in my heart, what I do with my hands should be in sync. That's what I refer to as authenticity. So let me quickly take you in the next five min uh, two minutes about head and then we'll do some test around. So the head of an authentic leader brings about some solid uh, beliefs and values and thoughts uh, these are like the system files in your computer. They don't move too much. The thoughts can change, but your beliefs will broadly remain the same. You can make some tweaks to it, but the files will broadly remain the same. Like you do defragmentation in computers. You can move some files, but there are system files. They don't move. Why do you need to do that? Because the speed of the computer becomes better. And the bad news is these thoughts, beliefs are generally hardwired. So they are normally unchangeable. But the good news is you can create new wiring. That's what the brain science says. You can't destroy old tapes, but you can create new tapes. And then last but not the least, the coping mechanisms need to be better. Uh, and what do I mean by coping mechanism? In a crisis, normally people find out a method to deal with it. So let me give you a 45 second story of my wife. When my wife was carrying my son, um, she used to go for her, her scans. And first scan she did came home and told her sisters, you know, when they do this ultrasound, it pains a lot. The first reaction from her sisters was, oh, you do too much. It doesn't hurt. Being the first time mother or carrying for the first time, she thought maybe I'm exaggerating. She went for her second scan, came back. She told, no, no, even now it pain. Her sister said, last time also we told you, right? We delivered three kids, nothing happened to us. I don't know why you say all of this. After that, she went for four more scans, but she came back home and never told anybody anything. Because for her, the rejection was bigger pain. And the coping mechanism she created is, wherever you fear pain, don't tell others. Wherever you suspect rejection, don't share. And that's a coping mechanism she created. That was a good one then, but she generalized it and applied it everywhere. But an authentic leader, what he or she will do is they will upgrade like a software. They will have to go back and revisit their thinking process and see, is this thinking helping me or hurting me? That's where, as somebody talked about, in change management, a leader is willing to change the tape. So let me close this with a thought. If I'm listening to a song and I don't like the mood of the song, what do I do? I need to change the tape. So long as you play an old tape, you get the old song. To get a new song, you have to play a new tape because our results will change only when our actions change. Our actions change only when our decisions change but our decisions change only when our belief systems and thoughts change. That is where the head of the thinking authentic leader is flexible and they stand for certain values and they are unchangeable on that. 
the integrity is unchangeable but how i interact with you without losing my values is the piece so let me pause and see if there is any question you have or anything else i need to answer john right um i saw a question a while ago that's very relevant to your point about the head um ch mm -hmm. so the question the question was about how rank and file people um usually have a harder time being authentic um uh, what can you say about that, number one? And what type of tip can you convince them with using the head in order for them to, you know, want to be authentic moving forward? Absolutely. So uh, I'll give a, a funny example. Many, many years ago when I was uh, teaching MBA students, one of my students came back and said, you give me here lesser marks. You should have given me more marks. See, look how much they got. I listened to everything and I said, okay, you think you are not given what you deserve. Fair deal. So let me ask you a question. Forget for some time. I'm a bad, even for a minute, let us imagine I'm a bad guy. I will not, I'm not going to give you more marks, but let me ask you two questions. If the answer for your two questions is a yes, then I will change your marks. So then I asked him, because I did not give you that one mark extra, did your knowledge come down? He said, no. Then I said, if I increase the mark, will your knowledge go up? He said, no. Then I said, whether I give you a mark or not, your marks, your knowledge doesn't change. So what are you arguing with me with? And why the, I did not evaluate it like this, I can explain. But you are comparing yourself with others. The other point on ranking and comparison. I always tell my son, tell me how you can become better. I will always rank you and you are ranked based on your performance. And as a leader in the family or outside, I have the accountability to answer why I rank like that. And I will always tell why I didn't give you more. I don't tell you why I gave somebody else more. That's I'm not responsible for that, but I am answerable to you because I gave you certain marks. Have I answered that? Yeah, I think I think you answered it a bit, but I um at the other core part of that question is that the lower your position is in the corporate ladder, uh -huh. the less likely you have the power to become authentic. So, okay. what kind of tip on like on the head perspective can you give those okay. people? So, so let me quickly tell something. A lot of times people think change is not in my control, etc. But simplest point I ask is, imagine I'm working for a company and they made a choice. Like recently there was one business that was sold out and I was asked to go and talk to them. And when I was talking to them, uh, they were all disappointed. I asked and there were some brand ambassadors picked up and they were put in the room. And I was told, please inspire these brand ambassadors because they have to excite people. I walked in and I asked them, why do you think they picked you people? They said, the, because they didn't find anybody else. I said, do you see all the people outside are wondering why they didn't pick us and the people who are picked, you are thinking because they couldn't get any, the one chosen is not happy. The one who's not chosen is not happy. I said, it's a choice. If you are so unhappy, you could have simply gone and told your manager, I don't want to do this. You made a choice to continue with the recommendation to be a brand ambassador. Once you accept it, it's your responsibility. Now, by that, what I'm telling is change is a choice. If I don't like the company, I have a right to leave the company. But I know sometimes our responsibilities are there. Then you have to ask between my family and the nuisance value, which one is bigger? If my family is more important, I have to pay some price. So always there is a price for everything. There is nothing called free. So when I say yes, there is a price. When I say no, there is a price. Similarly, whether you are saying being authentic or not, first start being authentic to yourself and figure out how to communicate. That I will talk about in my next section. How to communicate your disagreements. I think on that point, I'll come to this one. So let us do this. This will give us good opportunity. So can we open the poll, please? How comfortable are you to express disagreements? All right, polls are already open, CH. Sure. Let's 
CH, am I right? There are two questions, right? So the first question is, how comfortable are you to express disagreements? And then the second question is, I know why I made the choice against my will. You're in mute. CH, you're in mute. Oh, sorry, because my yeah, headset sorry. is a problem. So, okay. So uh, the second one is more importantly, if you made a choice to not express, are you aware why you did that? Think about that and answer. Right. Okay. So we now have 70 person who've answered against 146. Okay. So let's go ahead. Look at that. Okay. I'll end the poll now and share the results. Here. Can you see? Oh, awesome. So if you look at it, a lot of us are saying we are uncomfortable expressing disagreements. That means in the head, there is a chatter going on. So let me quickly uh, get back to the previous one. Thank you so much. Um, uh, and then the second one also, if you looked at it, uh, I think, yeah. Sorry, do, do, I, do I share that again? No, yeah, just, just share that outcome. Okay. Yeah. Is that, is okay. that fine? Yeah, once again, even in this, I think mostly they do it. Now, this is where you have to start asking. There are very few said, uh, mostly they don't know, uh, or they know, they know why I made the choice. Now, this is where you need to ask the trade-off. What is the price I'm going to pay, right? Uh, yeah. And this is exactly what we need to think about when we reflected on the previous one, the head. There is a thinking process. I remember I was coaching a leader once, at one point in time. And the leader said, uh, you know, I, I have a challenge and you know, I can't accept failure. I, I don't want to be rejected. Then I, when I probed, this person stopped and said, you know, CH, I have to go back to my childhood. The amount of time I got from my mother depended on who got the first mark. If my sister got more marks, my mom gave more time to my sister. If I got more marks, my mom gave more time to me. So that means to get mom's attention, I had to beat my sister. Now that's the tape in the head, right? Now this is where I, I was looking at her and then I said, can you just tell me, uh, how is it helping you? This person said, no, I can't accept failure. That, that's where I stopped and said, now start looking at the emotions that you are going through. The person who, looked at her experience in the life, her mom gave her time when she got first. That means she has to beat her sister. Now she finished her studies, she came to her job environment. Now translate it, whose attention does she want? She wants manager's attention. Now to get manager's attention, what should she do? She has to beat her colleagues. Now beating the other people has become a tape in the head. Now unless that thinking process is rewired or a new wiring is created, people don't feel comfortable. Now that is where we come to talk about how, what is the heart of an authentic leader? Now, this is where somebody has to actually be self-aware of what emotions do I go through? That's why I ask the questions. What, because emotions are the triggers that cause the feelings and these emotions cause you to make decisions. And that is where you decide whether to be empathetic or non-empathetic. You are either assertive or not. So let me give you a quick story. I once applied for a role in an international location. <clears throat> and the hiring manager one day called me and said, hey, I need to have a chat with you. And he said, uh, I know how eagerly you are looking forward to this conversation because you are qualified for the role. You have all technical qualifications. And let me tell you a couple of things. Uh, you are groomable. We can give you training. We can make you better. And I have to tell you right now, I have somebody who does that role without me giving the training. And unfortunately, I don't have the luxury of time. Hence, I'm, while I feel bad for you, I don't think I can promote you. And I gathered enough inputs about you that you are a good person. Yet I figured out that you are not ready in these four areas. And the one point I want to let you know is Selecting you for this role means I have to actually remove somebody who is already very good at it. With no comparisons, while you may get other chances, somebody will lose their opportunity right now. So I have to make a right choice. So this is what in one of the research articles that are about balanced processing. 
how do you process positive information? How do you process negative information? While telling all of this, I'm sure the leaders were very, very uncomfortable. But still, he was aware of what he was going through. I remember a time where I had to fire somebody. Not because of his fault, but because the organization was going through some tough times. Two days I couldn't eat food because I knew this person was the sing single uh, breadwinner for the family. But if I can't control my emotions, I can't regulate my emotions. That's where self-awareness, what emotions do I go through? Where do I go through? How do I go through? Are you aware of your emotions? If you start looking at yourself closely, when I get angry, what do I do? So when I get angry, my speech starts stuttering. My throat goes dry. My eyelids start becoming heavy. That means your body is giving you enough signals. Are you listening to it? So start listening to your body closely. Start watching your feelings closely. Then you'll start observing so much more better about yourself. And then you decide whether you say yes or no. But you should be accountable for either your yes or no. Let me pause and see. Right. Thank you so much for that, CH. Um, we have a few questions here, yeah. but I think since we have, we only have three minutes left for the lecture, my suggestion okay. is for you to go ahead and finish it and then we can just accommodate all of the questions at the, at the rear end. Is that okay? okay? No, no problem. So let me then move on from this one. So how comfortable are you expressing your emotions without being emotional? Think about it. I do not want to do this poll, but if you are not comfortable expressing your emotions without becoming emotional. So the point is emotional expression. That means I am comfortable to share my emotions. If I were to tell, hey, John, I'm very unhappy with you. You, are, you have caused me stress is a very emotional response. Think about it. If you open this one, uh, the, if you Sage, want to open I, it, yeah. Sage, I, I, I played the poll anyway, since it's just one choice and people sure. are responding very quickly. Okay. So there's 40 responses now, 50 responses now. Show me the results. It's very quick. I'll show you the results in a bit. Hold on. It's changing significantly though. Can I, can I wait until 80? I think it's no just problem. five more, five That's more seconds. Perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. I'm in no rush. Okay. Almost there. And then, okay. I'm going to share it. I'm going to share it now. So out of, out of the 90 people who voted, here's the result. Okay. Can you see it? All right. I think we are broadly in between. Now, a quick one. This is where I was giving the example. If I go to John and tell you caused me stress, John will say, that's your problem. But if I go to John and tell, hey, you know, John, every time uh, when you give me those triggers, it causes a lot of pressure to me. That is where as an emotionally intelligent leader, you are able to take care of your emotions better. If you want to deal with emotions better, first you have to breathe normally. That's what aviation industry says, right? If you want to help others, first you have to help yourself. You have to wear your mask. You have to breathe normally. If you can't breathe normally, you can't help others. So breathe normally. That is where control your emotions. If you control your emotions, then you'll be able to deal with others' emotions. So that's where the choices come. Here is where uh, there was one leader who actually told me, CH, you are a great guy, but by promoting, I can't create a parity issue. Let me tell you, the role that you are doing is not a big one. First, we have to create a bigger role and then promote you. Because if I promote you without a bigger role, you will actually eventually suffer. So I saw a lot of clear decision making, clarity. And in the subsequent days, I saw him go and talk to my manager, started getting me additional responsibilities. That's how the leader's hand was authentic. What he told is what he did. What he said is what he did. So he talked straight to me. He didn't create unnecessary expectations. So this is where an authentic leader's competency comes in. So are you skilled to be an authentic leader? Are you confident? Are you assertive and self-assured? Self-assured means internally you feel secure. Are you conscious? Do you know what happens to you? Do you know under which circumstances you do it? And congruent means your head, heart, and hand should go hand in hand. That's what makes us an authentic leader. So this is uh, before I move on. So I'm done with my lecture. All right. 
Okay. So CH, is it okay now to give you some of the questions that are in the chat box? Absolutely. All right. So there's there's one question here from Maria Oria Bo. She said, um, "How can you how can authenticity work for your career advancement if you have colleagues that are very uh, particular with self promotion and are assertive?" It almost feels like me. Um, I I always believed my work should speak for myself. But unfortunately, the tape in your head is, I don't want to go talk about myself. Let them promote themselves, but there is nothing wrong in taking opportunity to tell what is some good work that you are doing. So identify the discomforts you have. And it's, it's uh, too much on this call, but let me tell you, uh, you'll get my email ID from these people. If you want to set up a call with me, I can do a coaching conversation with you. I'm sure you'll get enough coaches. But the simplest point you need to ask is, what is my discomfort in talking positively about myself? Humility is good, but humility is not playing yourself down. So somebody said something very interesting. Humility is not talking less about myself, but thinking less of myself. It's not thinking less about myself. It's not thinking less of myself. I have self-regard but I'm very, very comfortable to accept I don't know. But if you step back, look at and see what are your discomforts to promote yourself, do that. Don't have to claim things which you don't, but in a corporate ladder, unless you go back, change some bit of your thinking process, you will not be able to make choices to communicate. Have I answered that? Yeah, yeah, very clearly. Thank you, Thank CH. You. And I have another relevant question here, but this one is from an anonymous attendee. No problem. He, he said, um, he or she said, now, how can you sometimes differentiate being simply emotional and aggressive and being authentic? Because okay. sometimes in, the, in companies, right, when you want to show your true self, you are being authentic, but at the same time, they view you as being aggressive or too emotional. So how do you balance the two? Sure. So aggression is, I win, you lose. Uh, what does that mean? Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, what, what does that mean? It simply means the whole argument I'm doing is to win against you. And I don't care whether you win anything or not. The sole focus is I have to win. In the process, even if you are hurt, I don't care. Mm, all right. Right? That is aggression. Right. The second one you said? The second one is emotional. You're emotional. Being, being emotional, yeah. Now, the moment you start to become emotional, you start complaining. Right? Or, you know, always things happen to me. You did it. So either you blame others or you blame yourself. So you fall into victim mode. And an authentic leader says, I know I failed. Now I need to look at what do I do to become better? I know these are four skills I don't have. I need to build this. If I can't build this, I can't grow. That is authenticity. Right now, I'm not good at it. I will take so much more time to get there. So that's how I look at it. So is it right that, uh, is it my understanding correct, CH, that authenticity comes with a certain level of self-regulation? So it doesn't mean that just because you are showing your true self, that's already authenticity. True. You have to self-regulate. Absolutely. Now, there I'll just add a point. Auth because somebody told me be authentic, some my son, you know, my wife or somebody comes and asks me, hey, how do I look in this dress? I don't like it, okay? Uh, but if I tell, oh, how terrible you look, that is not authenticity. What yeah. you say and how you say. Say, hey, I know how much you love this dress. And so long as you are happy in this, uh, I'm happy for you. Uh, I, I, I love the happiness in your face. And if you give me a choice, Normally, these kinds of colors I don't choose. Right. Okay. Thank you, CH. I think you were able to answer that question now. Um, yeah, please go ahead and finish the remaining part of your presentation. Okay. No, uh, there is no major presentation. So if we have gone through, if you looked at it, we talked about what is authenticity. We talked about why is authenticity important. We talked about the three H's, which is all about how to become authentic. Means with your head, heart, and hand. And build your competence. Become confident stay conscious, be aware of your emotions. And to your previous point, 
to be to regulate yourself you should have awareness without awareness you cannot get regulation i i need to know when i get angry if i don't do that it doesn't help so last piece i wanted to let you know here i used to get extremely irritated extremely upset angry and i used to get physical with my son i would punish him so one day when i talked to a mentor he said he is your son fair but before being the son he is a human being you have no right to hurt others emotions that's the day i just decided okay i will not touch him now but sitting next to him it is difficult right i am aware of my emotion if he is doing a step wrong in mathematics i would get irritated so what i started doing i make him sit away from me because by the time i get up and go there it it takes time by then my anger levels come down so that's what i mean by regulation a i am aware b i am regulating so if i have looked at who i am what is the authenticity why is it important what should i do to become authentic and how do i become authentic now here is an action plan for all of you i want all of you to put in the chat box put to be authentic to myself we started off saying if i do this i'll become authentic with these inputs are you able to figure out something about yourself that you want to take and start doing something so put one and say i will start doing this put two and say i will stop doing this and three is if you start something and stop something you have to get some outcome when i stopped being angry and i started building my patience to control my anger and give time to my son i started building my listening skills which built a positive relationship today my son comes and expresses his discomforts with me that's an outcome for you like that you tell what did you start what will you start what will you stop and what results will you get right so ch we have two more minutes maybe we can wait for people's responses sure. um and then we can do a final wrap yeah sure can you see the chat box ch or do you want me to read for you there, there is a chat box unfortunately i'm struggling okay. to open it That's okay. So we are getting some responses now. So for example, we get a response from J3. He said, "This is a phone, J3." He said, "I will start aligning my thoughts, the things okay. that I say and the things that I that I need that that need to be aligned." Sure. And then Nina said, "I I will start building my self-esteem. Stop pleasing everybody." Yeah. And then Ayers Gale said, I'm sorry, Krisha said, stop thinking negatively. And okay. Romil said, I will start being true to myself. Um, Ms. Juve said, start with a passion on something. And Krisha said, um, oh, sorry, Roslyn said, Ga start gaining more confidence or self-esteem. And then stop thinking about what others will think about me. Absolutely. Right? And this Great. one is from Re Regina. This is also amazing. She said, mm -hmm. "I will start to trust the journey." Number one, and then number two, I will stop hesitating, and then number three, with this, I will get faster and better results. That's How really amazing! Amazing. Yeah. How amazing! Thanks, uh, all of you. Thanks so much to each of you. Um, I, I particularly noted this word: stop thinking negatively. One simple tip is. Uh, they tell never tell children don't do it don't do it don't do it or don't drop it don't drop it they drop it because the mind is designed not to take knots if you tell do not drop the mind drops the knot and says do drop they drop it mm -hmm. and instead they say instead of telling i will not do this start telling yourself i will start doing this yeah so never tell don't do this don't think negative when you say don't think negative actually you are thinking negative yeah it gets further deep instead you say oh i'll focus on music because the beauty of brain is it listens anything that you tell it and so you just need to tell it okay i need to give attention and then once you give attention to the thought they'll sit they are like children if you have a baby at home the baby keeps coming every time No, go. I'm talking to John Uncle. We'll come back in two minutes. I told you just now. Go. So one big learning in newsletter they gave me was amazing. When children come to you, they come to you when their love bank is empty, and they want your attention. And when you are shouting at them, they are very happily looking at you. 
because negative attention is better than no attention. Your thoughts are like that. Your thoughts always want your attention. So put them down somewhere, give some time and say, I'll come back to deal with this later. Then it will sit down. Otherwise, if you say, let me think, it will keep coming back. So give attention. Okay, so thank you so much, CH. Um, I really love that final thought on how important it is to be positive and to be more self-aware and how also important it is to self-regulate when you are already self-aware because that's one of the things that will help better relationships and interactions with individuals around you once you're able to be your authentic self, not just by being like reflecting who you are, but being who you are and not, help, not hurting others in the process, right? Absolutely. Okay, so, so CH, we, we, just ha we have a lot of questions and chats, you know, um, and we don't have that much time. But what, what we will do, just like what we agreed upon on the tech test, is I will send to you the questions and the remaining chat portions so that you can send us your responses or you can respond. I will do that. Via your LinkedIn. And then, I will do that. Yeah, we will learn more from I that. will do that. Only yeah. thought, I saw one question, are authentic leaders successful? Now define success in your life. It could be making money or being happy, you decide. And the only point I just wanted to let you know is simplest, emotionally intelligent people are authentic. That's the underlying thing. You should know who you are, what you stand for, what you work for. And I used to do this with Luz or anybody. Go ahead and learn to be honest. Tell what it is. And I sometimes, when I send a message to people, I tell them, additional love message I'm sending you, how much I love what you did. Because I'm saying it, you don't have to say that to me. So I learn to articulate my emotions without an expectation that they will give it to me. And I know why I'm doing it. If you know why you are doing what you're doing, you are accountable to yourself. And authenticity is not accountability for others. It starts with yourself. People who are accountable to themselves will also become empathetic and care for others. And they grow people. And that's how they become successful. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you, CH, for you know giving us some inputs on how to become better people. As you can see, like we have a very active community here with us. They respond to your questions. They respond um, to, to the discussions. And I think that's because we have so much um, so much motivation to learn. The Philippine learning community is just like that. So thank you for sharing, us, sharing with us today how to become better people by looking at building our authenticity and making that a strength. So for everyone, um, please say your thank yous to CH uh, and we'll make sure that CH will answer your questions that are in the chat box. And we hope to see you in the future sessions. Just like what I showed to you in the previous slides, this week, or sorry, this season is about Resilience 2.0 how will the Philippine learning community bounce back? And you saw the different sessions already in that, um, in that slide. You will be able to see the registrations on the PSTD Facebook page. Just go there, look for the advertisement, register because we only have 500 slots per session. So if you want certificates, you have to be able to fit in within the 500 slots in Zoom. All right, so thank you so much for everyone for being here. Thank you, CH, for all of your amazing insights. You're such a legendary storyteller, can I just say. We hope that we can still have you in our future oh, sessions as we go on helping the community. All right. Happy to be of any little help. Thank you so much for having me. And if, I, right. if you learned credit to you, if you didn't learn, mistake is mine. Next time I'll be better if I ever get a chance again. Thank you so much for that humility. You have a great day ahead, CH, and keep safe and healthy.